Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Jay Cal's View. I'm your host, Jay Cal, and this is a journey of a journalist. The Chronicles of a Content Creator. I am Jay Cal, and I have been tirelessly working at Alliance-Wrestling.com for well over 10 years to bring you the NWA consumer content, content, content. Uh, Now, I mostly fancy myself a writer, but I've been doing podcasts on and off since 2007. One of uh, my favorite podcasts that I got to do was the Alliance Guys podcast. That was a trio of uh, my friend Jaden, who actually lives in New Jersey. He's a longtime NWA supporter out there in New Jersey. And my friend DKM, who you guys heard me speak about quite a bit here on J Cal's view. And the three of us, uh, actually spent many, many weeks, uh, recording conversations with all kinds of wrestling talent, plus always giving out our two cents and hashtag talking NWA. So as a special treat, have some audio from the newest Alliance guys podcast that will be on YouTube very soon, probably within the next day or so. And uh, going forward, we'll be dropping the Alliance Guys podcast here on J-Cal's View, as well as the traditional J-Cal's View content. So stick around, give it a listen, let me know what you think. And again, if you want to ever join the conversation, check out the uh, anchor.fm and send me a voice message. If you have questions you want answers to, do it. If there's something you want me to talk about, send it away. Let's let's get on the same page here. We're all NWA fans. And, of course, tune in tomorrow night, 6.05 p.m. Eastern for NWA Power. Okay, uh, stay tuned. Jaden. The one and only Jaden has returned to the Alliance Guys podcast. Jaden, damn it, man. It's so good to hear your voice. It's still real to me, damn it. Oh, hey, hey, how are you he, doing? He was in Atlanta, man. He, he, and he was walking around, and I don't want to sound like that guy, but I felt like, what's he doing here? And yeah, he's still living off of it's still real to me, damn it. Well, he also lives in Atlanta, I believe. I'm 90% sure he lives in Atlanta. And I think he was invited to the NWA. In fact, other than maybe Nick Aldis, Eli Drake, and um, Eddie Kingston, I think he cut the best promo that they did that weekend. <laughs> because I'm a weird dude who likes to read stats, uh, I was checking out how many people actually watched the show and. The last time I checked, which was about 12 o'clock Pacific time, it was over 250,000 people. Um, do you measure that as a success, Jaden? If that was on television, that would be a uh, – hold on. Let me see if I can remember how this goes. I think that would be a point oh four rating. No, a point four rating maybe. Uh, I think it's a point four rating. On uh, television, that's – wrestling does but television and youtube is a completely different animal the benefit to youtube is it's going to continuously get spread out there especially when people like the rock put it over and um you know i think as the word spreads on youtube that it could lead to a lot more views and people um especially because i read a statistic again speaking of statistic that a million people tweeted about it well that's four times as many people as watched it makes me actually think that either YouTube is screwing them over or a lot of people are talking about it that haven't seen it. Or Dave Lagana has posted about it 750,000 times. But, well, so okay. It, I, Let me interrupt you, and I'm sorry to do it, but there was, um, there was an element in that crowd. I was there live. I could speak to it. Um, and we had kind of talked a little bit about this offline, but I want to address it now. Um, Mr. James E. Cornett on um, both night one and two um, specifically said, hey, you know what? This show is just a show um, without the audience. If, if you guys aren't there, uh, we're taking a dynamic away from the show where, you know, if you go to, you know, watch Monday Night Raw, the audience is 
kind of like uh, eavesdropping on the action that's happening in the ring. Uh, but Cornette was quick to point out that the action in the ring, well, the audience was like a part of that show, part of the cast, if that makes sense. He said, hey, uh, we don't care if who you boo. We don't care who you cheer for. Just be proactive. Just don't sit on your hands. So um, to something that you said earlier, there was a lot of times where it felt like uh, maybe some of the crowd was disingenuous, uh, but the crowd was hot. And the point I'm trying to make going back to Twitter, which I guess I took a very long route to get to, is that a lot of the people there were excited to be there. And a lot of the people that I personally met and shook hands with tweeted about the show constantly. So it doesn't surprise me that they had uh, more tweets than they had uh, people watching because, I mean, for every time that I tweeted something about the show and used the hashtag NWA power, every time somebody else did the same thing, it, it, it certainly built it up. Well, I hope that honestly, I, I mean, I want to start about the beginning of the, of the episode and talk about it, how's we, how we thought about it, how it went, everything like that. But I really honestly hope that something gets, comes out of this more like it's instead of 250,000, it's 300,000 next week and 350,000 and it works its way up and more and more people start sharing it. Um, I'm not a hundred percent bond uh in love with it but there are a lot of that i do love about it and you know i think once we talk about this it'll be a good conversation to have and see what other people's thoughts on it yeah and you know it's it's kind of funny because i don't like stirring the shit that's not my job i'm not here to make people feel uncomfortable but i do you know there was quite a few detractors of billy corgan and dave lagana when the nwa was purchased a lot of people flat out said hey i'm not happy with this brand i'm not happy with these two guys running this brand one guy in particular was greg anthony the former nwa national champion part of the uh the empire um you know some people might want to call matt riviera's boy but uh to to a lesser extent or to a narrow focus he was very avid that he was not happy with the nwa that he was not happy with dave lagana or billy corgan And for whatever reasons, you know, I don't want to get into too many details, but um, I on a on a chat room on Facebook, excuse me, a a message board. What do we call these now? A fan page, fan page on Facebook. Uh, This. uh, So for those of you who are paying attention to such things, we are using a new service. We are using the Anchor app, but uh, neither one of us have recorded as a, a duo before. So we are kind of experimenting and seeing how this goes. Yes, we're trying to experiment and figure this out and hopefully maybe eventually get a third member of the group on this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Missing tonight is DKM, but, uh, you know, with him being on assignment, hopefully he'll join us in the weeks coming soon. So, um, yeah. So let's talk a a little bit about the NWA. Uh, I mean, it's kind of hard not to talk about spoilers. Um, the spoiler was there. The NWA. Man, I thought he'd be retired by now. <laughs> well, I would think the Rock and Roll Express would be retired by now, but last night they wrestled the Rock Nest Monsters at Bar Wrestling in Southern California, and a week ago uh, they won the NWA World Tag Team Titles. Big about spoilers, right? <laughs> it's spoilers, spoil, spoil, spoil everything. Uh, the way I see spoilers are if if um, if the company doesn't want to talk about it then I will honor that. But if they're making posts about it, if the wrestlers are making posts about it, it's out there. There, There's no sense in hiding that. Uh, Jaden, what did you think about the Rock and Roll Express, Ricky and Robert winning the NWA tag team titles for the ninth time? Well, I'm going to say it like this. The 61-year-old Ricky Morton and the 63-year-old Robert Gibson, I believe, Right now, in 2019, are the hottest tag team of professional wrestling. What the uh, hell? Um, Sorry. It's okay. Please explain to me. I mean, don't get me wrong. Even at 60 years old, they are probably better than 90% of the tag teams out there. That doesn't this is true. Hot, honestly, um, it, it's the hot tag teams aren't the Usos, aren't the Revival, aren't the, uh, the Lucha Brothers, aren't the Young Bucks. Whereas are they even young anymore? Like the middle-aged bucks, 
Um, 30 something bucks. Yeah. The old fucks. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> there goes our G rating. <laughs> there goes our G rating. It's the Rock and Roll Express in 2019. Well, and, and it's, it's, you know, since we're talking about it, you know, I, I've been watching the Rock and Roll Express uh, tag team since I was a little boy. Um, I followed their career. You know, I've, I've seen them win the tag titles. Heck, uh, they were the tag team champions for the NWA when the NWA invaded the WWF in 1998. I think it was 98. Um, so it's no surprise to me that a tag team that's held the titles for every decade since they've been in action, we're talking about the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, and now the 2019s or 2010s, however you want to say it. Good Lord. And the duo, it's not like they just wrestled for the NWA. They just got done wrestling a, a circuit with New Japan Pro Wrestling in the United States. They did a, a couple of matches with Ring of Honor. They were at the Crockett Cup, and Ricky and Robert have been teaming all over the United States. It, it, it baffles my mind that we've got 60 year old tag team champions, but to you, what to the point you just made, Jaden, they're, they're probably the hottest tag team in wrestling right now. Uh, think of any other and tell me any team that's doing what the rock and roll express is doing in 2019 at 60 plus years old. Uh, we'll add to the fact that it wasn't too long ago that Ricky Morton was a 50 year old NWA world junior heavyweight champion. Absolutely. And that's something that we we've talked about in the past, uh, you know, he defeated his uh, protege, Chase Owens, to win that title, and he did so in an NWA Smoky Mountain ring. Uh, and the fans went nuts for it, just like they went nuts for it in Georgia, in Atlanta, in the Georgia broadcasting, public broadcasting studios. So it, it's, it's the irony isn't lost on me that uh, Ricky and Robert still got it. They're still rocking and rolling, even at their advanced age. And, I mean, to be honest, I – Tag team wrestling is a unique animal. You know, you're not in the ring full time. You're not, it's not simply one man versus another man. You, you always have an option to, to team out. And when we talk about tag team wrestling experience, again, who's more experienced than Rock and Roll Express? Exactly. They may not be the youngest cats out there right now, but they are definitely the smartest cats and the most experienced cats and probably the toughest cats. I mean, I've watched them in chain matches and cage matches and they're still going out in 2019. So there's your sneak peek of the Alliance guys podcast. Again, uh, you know, I just realized that we're two weeks away from it being 10 years since I've been in the podcasting business. So that's that blows my mind a little bit. I've been doing this for a decade, guys. She's Louise. And you think it's bad now? You should have heard it before. But we will be producing more and more content. Again, head to YouTube. Um, head to all of our socials at the Alliance blog. And that's, you know, TikTok, Tumblr, Twitter, Twitch. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, anywhere you just type in the Alliance blog, you're sure to find us. And again, this is a presentation of Alliance-Wrestling.com, your number one source for news and information regarding the National Wrestling Alliance. Until next time, I'll see you at the matches.